Okay. I like so, it. Uh, what's cracking? What you got for me today? I got a thing. Okay. So, three in the morning, I was going down the plus ultra rabbit hole because nobody talks about it. And I'm a little bit obsessed right now because it makes so much sense to me. And we didn't have like a lar- long time to talk about it. I didn't have a whole bunch of references ready, but information is progressing and there's nothing on it because I don't know if you know, but plus ultra that is, it's not English. It's Latin, even though it sounds like words we use mm-hmm. plus ultra, it, but it means um, to go beyond. So okay. it was used by the by early explorers, like maybe Columbus, but even maybe before him. And so that was like their motto. And they had it on on all the ships and all the stuff. And it was to go beyond Star that Trek. they were explorers. Yeah. And then you know that? Do you, yeah. like, no, I don't okay. know that. But I, oh, yeah, you're, okay. you're schooling me. But yeah, I'm listening. Okay. I'm Sweet. with you, though, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, right. And then check this out. Mm-hmm. That that plus ultra is carved into the coat closet at mar-a-lago hmm. which i find that i i like click all these things together did you read the last president and um baron trump's um, marvelous adventures those books i have not read them but i am familiar with them you're familiar right yeah. and then i was thinking the coat closet like to narnia it was just like all these thoughts <laughs> where I was, all weird it ties in together hmm. why would you have that carved in the back of your coat closet like you know Okay, and then, so start start me with the plus ultra thing from the beginning, from the very beginning. Where did you first hear the about very, it? Yeah, I heard it on on what? Amy says what the fuck. She was uh-huh. interviewing. Um, I'm gonna mess up her name. She's she's a she's a character. Um, I don't want to mess up her name, but we'll get it later. So she was interviewing her, and she was self proclaimed Bill Bill Mars' sister by blood they weren't raised together and they're both children of hugh hefner and hugh hefner is supposedly part of the plus ultra program i've always heard he was a programmer and i find a lot of truth in that because i honestly i can't think of another reason why women would put on bunny ears and serve men if they weren't programmed you know it's just ridiculous like when you think about it it's like wait what why would you do that (laughs) it doesn't make sense and just um and all the things that came out after his you know his death like there's a lot of stuff that was screwy and tunnels under you know there's a woman that's claiming to be bill maher's sister and Hugh hefner's daughter yes they're both they're both his children and there's supposedly like 10 of them or something because they are not um they they are not made of love they are made of in vitro fertilization because certain people are meant to be brought into this world. I don't know if that it's true, but I've heard a lot about it um, outside of that practice. There's, there's like, you know, ancient stories from back in um, the Middle East, like Sumeria, you know, Sumeria, which she also referenced as far as the tree of life, their tree and biologically altering humans. And she's like, it's been going on forever for thousands of years, you know? Um, And she just made a lot of sense. I got to remind, you have to remind me or I have to remind you or whatever, but the the Amy says what the fuck that you're talking about. We got to put uh-huh. a link to that in the description, and I got to watch that yeah. so I can I can yeah. get this plus plus ultra thing because I'm like I'm on the outskirts of it. You know, I'm not really. I, yeah, I haven't done any deep diving into it at all, at all. So but you I'm, have the pictures, like you see, like throughout time, how there's certain celebrities that sh- keep showing up to, physically. Yeah. yeah, they seem to. I mean, in our president, he's definitely more than one person. I'm gonna say definitely. You know, like he's and so what she explained was that it's not necessarily it's cloning, but not the way that we think of it. Like, it's not like people are getting in pods and getting zapped into, you know, I'm sure that is a possibility as well. And she said the same, but it's more of an in vitro fertilization thing being the loophole in the entire. Oh, my God. So hold on a second. You making me think about this right now with what you're talking about. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh my goodness. Let me find it first. Go ahead. Keep talking. See, talking. see it'll start clicking. That's the thing. Like I have so many, like it just, because I'm, I've been wondering about that. I've been wondering about the celebrity twins. I've been wondering about, um, um, the lookalikes of course, but, um, she said, so it, what made sense to me is that these, that there's certain like birth, birth lines that are, um, that are, she called them birth sets. So she'd yeah. say he's from so-and-so's birth set. And um, the thing, this is, okay, this is her story. I'm not advocating and I'm not hating. She said that, that um, 
they were brought in. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, right? Very yeah, interesting. So what do you know about that? You got a whole bunch right? more. Yeah. Yeah, you I've seen them. Um, yep. And the theory is that they just recreated, you know, using DNA, which falls into the same exact. Yeah. So weird. I mean, he doesn't, to me, have the exact same facial structure, but it works well. This one, Akhenaten, is such a weird looking. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. I didn't see, I haven't seen all of these. Oh, shit. I didn't see that one before. That's yes, I feel cool. really too. so weird. It's weird. That's supposed to be Obama, too. <laughs> right, well, see, that looks more like him because the ears, for sure. Those babies look photoshopped. This baby looks photoshopped, the one on the um, my left. The well, little his one. His face does. Obama's his face, face does. Right. Yeah. And she looks hefty. <laughs> A little hefty. Yeah, those are all... Wow. See, yeah, he has a he has an interesting look, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Oof, we she, went, went too far. We went to P <laughs> from O to P, but uh, but yeah, this Obama she, thing. She, that was like, the one that like it's yeah. just the kids too. Like it's crazy. All all four. That's a that's a trip. I never saw that. I never saw that before. And that's so crazy. That's very weird. So we have to talk. So is that about, what you're talking like, about? Yep. Yep. And um, I found a whole bunch more this um, this weekend, just the lookalikes, but I don't want to get off subject because I can I'll find them after we um, watch this video I found. So I have to tell you, so she said that they come in to be angels, like to be good people that are going to move humanity forward so that we can ascend and become, you know, um, who we we're meant to be before we got infiltrated by you know, the bad ones, which is kind of like a running theme throughout everybody's like, it always ends at That's kind a of feel popular there. narrative and right now. Yeah, that, that is a exactly. popular narrative. Yeah. But that her that interview was done a long time ago. And this video that I'm going to show you, it was posted seven years ago, but it's from the 1960s. Okay, so um, so but really quickly, so they were brought in to do great work. So we're, we're talking about Tesla, Einstein. Um, um, what's the other one? the electricity guy who claims he Edison. discovered yeah Edison um so all of these I hear, great I hear that Einstein in particular was a fraud but you know that's a whole different rabbit hole well created maybe he was created you know like and the the so they come in to do this great and there's a there's a running um rumor too that about the secret society of great people that have been meeting throughout the years and you know um that, that tesla is involved i believe einstein there's there's others i just don't know their name offhand um and they would all be introduced at the world fairs um so you i'm not even gonna i don't even have to preface it anymore because you're up to date on you know the the theory behind the architecture um the antennas the free energy right yes yes yeah you're up on all that stuff and um it's it, that stuff is easily searchable which is suspect to me but um people can find that if they're interested in hearing more about that so this this is a recording that was um made at the world for fair in the 1960s i think it's 65 or 60 something we'll see on the on the recording um and that's all i have to say it's it's disney uh, yeah okay and i why hello there on behalf of walt we want to welcome you to the 1964 World's Fair. As a token of his appreciation for your continued partnership and support, we have put together this commemorative album, which revolves around his favorite moments. Moments that may be best enjoyed as companions to the attractions themselves. Because we believe each attraction will live on for generations to come, we hope you take pleasure in the message of progress that each has to offer. Now, without any further ado, may the reverie begin. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow, shining at the end of every day. Oh, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow, and tomorrow is just a dream away. And there's a dream that has a charm, he follows his dream with my heart. And when it becomes a reality, 
with it's you. It's a dream come true for you and me, so there's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Shining at the end of every day, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Just a dream away. Yeah, it looks like the Robins are getting ready to celebrate Valentine's Day today. <laughs> For Walt and the Society, this is a passion project that ensures things could be better than they are today. And in fact, they are. Maybe not in this world, but in a new world to come. The moving pictures flicker up on a big screen. We have immersive motion pictures that can show you this world where we can travel using our minds to prepare our bodies for the inevitable physical journey. And I even hear tell about two brothers in North Carolina. Our immersive motion pictures also reveal flying contraptions with the power to reach any moon, any planet. The same power to drive these contraptions can be used to power appliances, transportation, global communications, to power people, to power peace. Oh, oh boy, it sure beats chopping wood. And isn't our new ice box? The ice box. There are so many innovations that we keep on ice, ready to share with you and the rest of the world with your support if you choose to step with us through that door. Carry water from a well. And thanks to progress and the work of the society, the dreams of tomorrow can be made manifest today. Yes, sir. We've got everything we need again? to make life easier. Will you say? Say, Will mother. You I was reading about a 1965. Okay, but didn't we already have someone like, named Tom Boston Edison who worked? Then? I don't know. I mean, this was this was. I don't know. This looks like a. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure watch that we it. already had ice boxes and, and TVs at that point. Right. I think that they're going maybe through a timeline. Okay. You know, a timeline. But did you hear what he said? Like at the beginning was traveling with your mind to yes. any anywhere you want to go, things like that. Um, well, let's finish it and we'll see. Okay. And an idea that paved the road to this new world. Electric lights? Oh, the society has come so far in so little time, and we look forward to showing you the heart of the project. The advancements we have made are nothing short of electrifying. They will spark change in the lives of people everywhere. Oh, that's right, folks. Now Sarah has time for other things like... Like canning uh, and cleaning the oven. Yes, two things that can be easily powered using the natural energy that surrounds all of us. I probably never will. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get the laundry off the line before it starts raining cats and dogs. <laughs> uh, don't don't worry. worry. After testing this revolutionary technology, we've been able to harness not just the energy we can see... But the energy we can't. All you have to do is put your wash on the line, right? Oh well, the cistern was low anyway. Wow, we look at that. This energy is free, and it's for everyone. <laughs> We're using my new stereoscope. It's not a toy, you know. Ooh, la, la. We can light cities without consuming a single resource. Isn't she a knockout? She's the star of the, the old World's Fair in Chicago. <clears throat> Now you put that away before your mother finds it. Oh, Dad. We can enjoy the modern extravagances of mankind without wasting a bit of nature's precious beauty. Something that plays music right here in our home. There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. She keeps that thing going all day long. Progress. The world will be lauding our progress for days, months, generations to come. The moment we are prepared to trust them with it. <laughs> the world can take this free energy to create their own innovations that will further drive progress without overtaxing the precious energy of our citizens. By tapping into this natural energy, the world can focus on using the most renewable resource on the face of this planet, people's creativity. Now you be home by 9 o'clock, daughter, you hear me? Oh, well, with all this talking, I've worked up quite a thirst. I think I'll take one of those newfangled trolleys down to the drugstore soda fountain and meet the boys for a cold sarsaparilla. Because right now we have so much to celebrate. Sorry, We're drinking root beer now. Most of which we've still yet to share. To those joining us, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you along for this next leg of the journey. Now we're all aware of the facts of life. That every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. 
and most people have hopped aboard a similar train of thought, accepting what appears to be the fleeting nature of what we know as life. Even those who seem to live in the world of tomorrow have a tough time switching tracks. We, on the other hand, see another way. We believe in preserving the unique beauty that only Mother Nature can provide in all of its forms, from plant life to animal. And we have successfully developed the technology to do so. Technology that will allow living beings the opportunity to weather any unexpected storm. By coaxing a body into temporary stasis, we can preserve any life form as long as is necessary to repair it. So no longer will one life necessarily be a flash in time. No longer does the end need to be the end. Thanks to groundbreaking discovery and innovation, a new dawn lies in wait for all of us. Even today, in 1964, we are unable to look back through the dark mists of time and see what truly happened to the great primeval beings that ruled the earth before us. But if we break free from the mire of tired thinking, we can focus our attention and efforts on another opportunity that lies ahead. Coupled with our ability to preserve life, we have the power to produce something truly grand. By taking what remains of any life, big or small, we can extract from its core its very essence and regenerate that life to its full glory. On a smaller scale, we can utilize this technology to repair injuries, cure disease, taking the remains of that which has been grounded and empowering it to once again take flight. New applications of these technologies, from preservation to regeneration, are being hatched and tested daily by our experts. Such power would allow us to live our lives free of sickness, free of loss, free of fear. Together, we can survive any unforeseen mishaps, any unexpected turns for the worse, no matter where we stand, no matter the time, as long as we strive to make this gift a reality for all. So join us in your continued support. Be the positive force that drives this old world into the new. We want to thank you again for your continued partnership and support. As we progress into tomorrow, we do hope you think of us, so that one day we may show everyone a world much like the one we were privileged to show you. As you've seen at the fair, advancements in technology are quickly reshaping our planet. We gave you a glimpse at a world without boundaries, a world very much united. A world in which all people are free to reach beyond any ocean, over any mountain, across any continent, and connect with anyone anywhere on the globe. Only time will tell if this invention will make our world smaller, just as we predict it might. At the Carousel of Progress, we explored the potential of sustainable energy. We imagined utilizing the power that invisibly surrounds us, encircling our planet in great abundance. And remember your cruise along the magic skyway? Imagine what good might be done if we used innovations in biology to preserve, repair, and rebuild the bodies of loved ones and prehistoric beasts alike. With Mr. Lincoln, we shared a great moment, paying tribute to freedom, the freedom to dream, the freedom to create. As consummate animators of film, we have since turned our attention to more ambitious animations, the inspiration for which began with a mechanical bird in a cage. This technology was created to provide folks with assistance, and thus great liberty, whether it be freedom from oppression, from the drudgery of daily life, or even the ravages of time. Because all people hope for liberty, we wholeheartedly believe we should strive to deliver it. And advanced robotics will help us do so. Well, we sure have enjoyed riding this wave of the future with you. We are pleased to assure you that we have developed and tested everything we've shared. 
Innovations that are sure to bring all folks in this world closer together through the power of communication, free energy, biology, and robotics. And with your help, we aim to bring this power from our world to yours. Remember, your keys to our ideas will always be on view in Tomorrowland. We look forward to welcoming you there. So long now. <clears throat> okay, so I I got like about a th like two thirds of the way through that, and I was just like, okay, what am I listening to, and why? Like I I, I don't I, I'm not I'm <laughs> like what is that? <laughs> what is that? Is it just Disney's Tomorrowland? Like everything they're saying? Is no, like, well, that's what, huh? That's what it might have been birthed from. But the, you know, there's a plus ultra there. But they're saying, okay, yeah, they're talking about genetics. They're talking about uh, being yeah. able to rebuild your mom and and the dinosaurs. I mean, I get it that that like you know that they were that they knew about genetics back then, but right. I mean, well, the fact that they said that they've tested it and that they can harness the the ether basically to power cities. That, like that was kind of interesting. Um, that they kept referring to it. And, that they kept right, saying and it would be free energy. Harness human creativity to create. Yeah, like, yeah they kept referring to the the ether, which is right. I, I always find that interesting because apparently there are five elements, not four, and we never right. talked about the fifth element, which is ether. So apparently yeah. they did back in 1964, I guess. But like, but what was I supposed to get from that? Well, okay. Like, it's what did like, you get from that? I got from it that this program, like, to me, it sounds like Disney, because what we know about him now is not good stuff. Well, what I know, I, I assume that you also, you know, are privy to the, like the, information regarding kids and the studio 33 and like all yes. you know the stuff that goes on in other parts now yeah, yeah. these days back mm -hmm. then it seemed like they he was on a different different trajectory um possibly you know it just ties into what she was saying that they were brought in here to do good you know um and something happened Martin along the way Disney these, these plus ultra these so he's one like, of them so, okay so i'm trying Anybody, to say trying all to actors yeah, go so ahead, basically, go you're saying like, in a way that he was brought in to do good, but along the way he got corrupted, and this yeah. is an example of him tr trying to do good. Is that what you're trying to say? I'm thinking, yeah, okay. something. But it also it just sounds so much the narrative that we're hearing today. You know, with a lot of so-called truthers, you know, stuff that's being uncovered and revealed and stuff like that. It's like verbatim, you know. And they're saying that it it's hidden and it's stolen and it's hidden. It's not hidden. I mean, this is being spoken about. So, and the other thing that tripped me out too is that when they panned over the Grand Canyon, it looked like. Did you see the the um, structures in the Grand Canyon that looked like um, pyramids, basically, all mm -hmm. through the Grand Canyon when they pan? That's yeah. also a little known. I mean, that's very people don't know anything about. Yeah, I actually just got a picture of that. Where did I put it? Let's see. Um, I actually just got a picture of the pyramid in the Grand Canyon. I don't really like maybe two or three days ago. So let's see mm. where would it be. If I find it, I'll put it in later. I'll, I'll post it later. But um, I mean, I'll but you've heard that you heard of those guys that were exploring the Grand Canyon, and then they um they they happened upon all this Egyptian these Egyptian artifacts and such. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the, I mean those when they panned over, it looked like like um you know, the pyramids that you find in South America, like the structures. So that was interesting. Um, the okay, see what I want to do. I I think. Okay, because I want to stay with I I want to try to figure out how to stay on what you're talking about, but I feel like it's not clear. Does that I make sense? don't find it clear either. Yeah, that's not right? clear to me either. So, <laughs> I'm just I, like, I, what? I, I, <laughs> <clears throat> so I just want to be clear on like the thesis and what to look for and that sort of thing. So I want to grab your thoughts because I don't know. I just uh, found it very interesting. Yeah, I I feel like Disney and 
Tomorrowland go hand in hand. Oh, yeah. As far as them being trying to be innovative and guess what's going to happen in the future. They were sort of always kind of doing that. They sort of stopped doing it in recent years as much mm -hmm. as they used to. Um, Maybe. So, yeah, I think that's I think that's interesting. Um, that that's always how it used to be. Everybody was always looking towards the future. We'd make cartoons like the Jetsons and, you know, in the world of tomorrow, we'll have this and that and the other, kind of like what you're talking about here. They're talking about all these things that we would have and it, then they stopped talking about them. Yeah, I mean, he also said that they had tested every single one of the technologies that they mentioned and they worked beautifully. Yeah, it's kind of strange that you're making me think of the news this weekend because there's a piece about cell phone technology. I gotta do it. I hate uh, how long. Somebody, it, huh? Yeah, I I heard something too. Oh no, it's in the comments on this video. I gotta read you a comment and I gotta show you another small clip. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. You'll be able to carry a phone in pocket in future. This is April eighteenth, nineteen sixty three, and she's got a prototype there, right? <laughs> she's got a working prototype there. Nikola Tesla talked about this in 1926. When wireless is perfectly applied, the whole earth will be converted into a huge brain, which in fact it is, all things being particles of a real and rhythmic whole. We shall be able to communicate with one another instantly, irrespective of distance. Not only this, but through television and telephony, we shall see and hear one another as perfectly as though we were face to face, despite intervening distances of thousands of miles, and the instruments through which we shall be able to do all of this will fit in our vest pockets. So he knew about this in 26. They were studying this tech in 26, is what I'm trying to say, right? What year so did 63, he die? When they had this prototype, I, I mean, I just imagine they had this stuff, you know, in the 60s and the 70s. They had it way before, before we did. They probably had to figure out how to weaponize it before they could give it to us. Yeah. Somebody did. Somebody did. What year did he die? Do you do you know offhand? I don't remember offhand. No. Um, I remember. I remember him dying young in a weird but see, way, but he didn't. He died old. That newspaper article with her actually holding a cell phone it predates the Disney recording that you said there. Uh huh. That you have. Yeah, there. definitely. Mm hmm. So, yeah, I like, saw that. But that's why I'm asking when Tesla passed away, like when he died, what year it was. I mean, you, you know about, you know who, who the person is who received all of Tesla's. Um, yes. Everything. But yeah. what does it, why, did, why do you care when Tesla died? And what does that have to do with anything? Oh, I was just wondering. Um, I was wondering, um, what was I wondering? I don't know now. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Um, uh, a nineteen forty-three. He died in forty-three. 43. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Something to think about. Forty-three. I always <laughs> thought he died young. You know, I I no, thought I had learned that, but he was old and you know, and alone and like that's horrible to think of. He was very brilliant, apparently, supposedly, allegedly. I mm. wasn't there. Um. So, okay, let me show you. I'm going to read you these comments really quickly. So there was actually, there was a couple. There was one guy who says that he, he knows, and this is, most people won't equate Plus Ultra with what I'm, the Plus Ultra program, you know? They're thinking that there's a secret society who's, um you know, in place, like in, like Tomorrowland. I think that's the premise of the movie. Do you believe um that they hide they um hide the truth with the truth a lot of the times um i don't even um, know what that means i don't know what you mean when like, you say that. like sorry my arm is caught um <laughs> like they'll give us some mm, let me get let me think of an example um I had so many examples and now I'm on the spot and I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, don't worry. You know, about I mean, it. they give us a yeah. little bit of the truth and then by omission, you know, or they'll, they'll put something, you know, like disclosure basically, or that they have to, they have to reveal what they're doing and what they're saying. And for whatever reason, so it keeps for their me, what's questionable is really what only thing I'm really taking from that recording is the 
fact that they were talking about free energy. Right. right? But everything yeah. else, the, all the technologies and stuff that they said that they were going to have are, are things that we do have today that they knew that we were going to have mm-hmm. back then. And I, my premise, I believe, I think, well, not my premise, but what, I'm going to take it a step further and say that they had all these ideas about DNA sequencing and et cetera, way back when Nikola Tesla was doing his thing in 26. So they, I, I mean, think, huh? right. No, so. clearly it's been around for thousands of years. If you think about, I mean, if you believe it depends on what, what, you know, people's certain belief systems are, but the, the sculpture, the carvings, the Anunnaki, the Sumerians and that tree, the DNA tree that they're plugging into um, in so many of the ancient um, in stone messages is what I call them because stone doesn't destroy like paper, you know? So mm-hmm. those remain from for thousands of years. And uh, yeah, there's something, definitely something there. And they're supposed to all be the same people, so to speak. Which is when you Who listen to, to the, the same people, the same people coming in over and over again. Okay, it's showing up, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Whole... Yeah, I'm just having a hard time following exactly. Like, I'm having a hard time following this one. I, I'm I'm having a hard time following it. You probably have to listen to that episode, but I was on it before I listened to the episode, so the episode just kind of clicked. For me. I'll yeah. give you. Oh, well. well, yeah, because I mean, I get that they were. Uh, you know, talking about what they were going to do in the future, but I, I don't see anything extraordinary about that. Well, he said, no. Well, what he said is that they've been doing it. And as soon as they're ready to trust everybody with it, then they'll, and if people are willing to walk through that door to the new world with them. Yeah. that um, They kept saying things that were like trigger, like, you know, the new world and shit like that, you know, and, uh, and again, that energy should be free. I'm with all that, but I just, you free know, energy. Yeah. Um, I just, I only hear of it today with people that are unveiling and revealing and finding, um, you know, scenarios. Had, um, you know what? On the next one, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to try to find some stuff on the World's Fair and, and show you. Yeah. On the so next interesting. One. Like the, Especially for the anybody incubator. that's watching because they don't, I, I, the, the, the World's Fair in itself is a, is a rabbit's hole in itself. So. I'm going to see what I can do if I can find that little piece of something and we'll do that. I asked my mom this weekend if she remembers going and she said, I think so. She said, I either went and then she said, or I didn't. She did the world fair. She said, was there one in New York in the, in 1940 something like in the late Mm forties. Um, and so we were going to look up the date. We just didn't get a chance to. (laughs) All right, I'm gonna see if I can um, find the stuff on the World Fair, and uh, yeah, and I'd be interested to see that because that's yeah, interesting. It's so. Yeah, and I also I think that it ties into like the architecture. I find extremely interesting the um, the state hospitals, all the people that ended up in there, and you know, I mean, for all intent and purpose, it was to retrain the brain. That and also the um, incubator babies and the orphan trains, all of that, like that we yeah. don't really learn about, and now we have so much information on it's it's interesting and i'm always looking at pictures like who are the black people (laughs) where were they (laughs) you just were like no my camera not for you but like (laughs) i don't understand but then actually i found um uh, some black state hospitals and black orphanages photos too which is weird because it's like are these new or old you know (laughs) it's a weird time it's a time period to put, you know, just to go down the, those rabbit holes. It's very interesting. I find it fascinating. <laughs> All mm-hmm. right. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not quite as fascinated as you are with that one just yet, but we'll, we'll see when we, when we tax. Yes, we will. Time, and I got to play this other clip. In the place. Place. You know, it's always in the comments, right? You got to read the comments section. So All there's right. some interesting stuff there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I go by. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bear with me one second, please. I want to make sure that it's, it's just are you a mind, small Are you keeping your eye on the time? No, I don't see the time. Wait, oh, two minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's link back in five minutes. <laughs> That's my idea. You can, you can go for another if you'd like. <laughs>